hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. If I were to ask you how many chromosomes does every single human cell usually have, if you were to tell me, well, most cells in our nucleus have 46 chromosomes, you would be correct. And then you might even tell me, well, we have 23 pairs, to be more exact, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. And 23 pairs means we have to times 23 times 2, which gives out our, our total number of 46. So we have 23 of these homologous chromosome pairs, where every single, so we've got, you know, 23 of these pairs, and in each pair we have two more or less identical chromosomes. But if I were to tell you that this one here, this one right here, is the same as this one here, that they're actually the identical ones, you might be a bit confused because they look a bit different. But I want to go over this kind of concept because that always confused me in school, why we talk about a chromosome both in their single form and in that strange X form. So if you look at meiosis here, meiosis we have the first stage is where they're all by themselves. So this here is when the chromosomes are all by themselves. And now we've duplicated them. And now we represent them as that X form. So what you can imagine is what would happen is we would have one of these. And during the second stage, during one of the stages of meiosis, we have to actually double it. I'm going to go over why we've doubled it in a second. But we have to double it. So we have a duplication happening. And then what happens is we just attach them end by end, and that's where the X form comes from. And so now we've doubled it, and then we attach it, and we have something in the middle which holds them together. And it's called your centrosome. And this is more or less, so when we have that X shape, it's the identical thing to the, the normal shape, if it's by itself, it just means we've doubled it. And the reason why we doubled it is obviously in mitosis and meiosis, we have to produce daughter cells, and they all have to get certain amounts of DNA and our, and our chromosomes. So here we've gone from one pair. Now we've doubled that. Now we're going to split this. And then in this case, this is mitosis. So all of the actual daughter cells will have that same thing we have originally. So here we have two of these, and then our daughter cells will have two each as well. And the reason why we can do that is because we've doubled our DNA. But so yeah, don't get confused if you see this X shape. That's the same as these alone shape. We just doubled it because we want to give it to our daughter cells. We want to have, in this case, mitosis, we want to have one each from daughter cells. So we have to double it before we can do that. So you should know that we have 46 chromosomes and that they come come these pairs, these homologous pairs. And with these homologous pairs, it's important to remember that there's genes on these pairs. I'm going to go over that in a second. And that these are, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about these genes and these chromosomes in this video. Remember that number 46, and remember that we have 23 pairs that make up that was 46. The actual dot point says, describe the chemical nature of chromosomes and genes. So what kind of chemicals chromosomes and genes are made up of. And first we'll start with your chromosomes. So we said earlier that we both call this a chromosome if they're by themselves, or if they've doubled up we still call that a chromosome because it's just the same stuff, just double the amount because we have to split it into two new cells. That's why we did that. And chromosomes, we can only see them during mitosis or meiosis. Mitosis or meiosis. If it's not mitosis, or if it's not cell division, so more or less this is cell division. If it's not cell division, we won't be able to see them. And I'll, I'll go through why as well. And it has to do with what chromosomes are actually are. So if you were to actually unwind this, this is actually like a, so what you can see here, this picture here, it's a chromosome, and here it's actually unwinding. And these chromosomes are usually not in this form, but they're actually in this unwound form. It's like that, all over. You can imagine it like having spaghetti in your, in your nucleus. They're not in that condensed form, they're in that spaghetti form. And this form we call chromatin. And it's gonna, we're going to see why we have it in this spaghetti form, not in this condensed form. And what this chromatin is, this chromatin consists of proteins, which we call histones. And I'm going to show you these histones in a second. We have these proteins called histones, which are right here. So these are our proteins, histone proteins. You can see them here, these balls. 
and around the actual proteins, we have we wrap DNA around them. So we wrap DNA around them, and that's what you can see here as well. So we have these DNA molecules wrapped around them, and the DNA and the actual packing protein, these histones together, we call that a nucleosome. So together, these two are nucleosomes. That's this word here, nucleosomes. And again, I just this is just one here, but you can imagine this whole spaghetti structure is full of that. Right? So chromosomes are usually, during the majority of their life, found as this chromatin form. This chromatin is a bit like spaghetti, and a spaghetti is what it consists of. It consists of these histones, which are these protein balls, and DNA wrapped around it. Now, why does it come like this? Why does it come like this and not like that? This is the next point, because we also have to talk about the chemical nature of genes, what a gene actually is. Now, in, on our actual chromosomes, we have lots of genes. More or less, one of the main reasons why we need to have chromosomes is because of these genes. Each gene might code for different proteins. Genes code for proteins. So genes code for protein. That's their function. Their function is to make protein. Now, if you have a look at this here, this is when we unwind a chromosome, we make it into this chromatin form, which is more or less just DNA in a longer strand wrapped around these protein um, histones. And what a gene is, a gene is just a segment of DNA. So this here is, all of this is here DNA, and this part of the DNA, we call it a gene. And the reason why we call it a gene is because it codes for a protein. So we can actually make this code, we can, this codes for a protein, so we can make it into a different type of protein. And there is, this chromosome is just wrapped around coil of DNA, and some parts of DNA will code for different types of proteins, therefore we call them genes. If we look, for example, at this chromosome, it, we have a loop, and the loop looks at just a tiny bit of that chromosome, this section here. And this section corresponds to this here, which again, that was a DNA being wrapped around. And if we look at this from the numbers, these bases, which we cover soon, these are the bases that make up that DNA sequence. So these are the bases. And then if we translate, if we translate these, that will lead to our protein. So it's important to realize what chromosomes are. Chromosome is actually the storage form. So it's the storage form for all of our DNA. And what is DNA? Why is that important? Well, DNA parts or segments of our DNA make up these genes. So these genes are segments of our DNA. And we need to have that DNA, those segments, because the segments are responsible for making proteins. Such as, for example, collagen, right? Collagen, which is a protein that is important for hair and other structures of skin as well, that is made by a gene. If that gene wasn't there, then we wouldn't be able to actually code for that protein. We wouldn't be able to make hair. That's just one example, but obviously there's quite a few more examples. But the dot points there describe the chemical nature of chromosomes and genes. But chromosomes are just basically DNA. That's what they are, DNA. But they're wrapped around, really condensed. But usually, for the vast majority of a cell's life, it's not found as these chromosomes. They're only in this chromosome sh shape when they're dividing. Usually they are found as this chromatin form here, this chromatin, and that's made up of histones, which are these protein balls here, and DNA wrapped around it. And that's what we call it together, we call it nucleosomes, these units here. And that was your chromosomes and your genes. Well, your genes are just segments of the whole chromosome. So there's one chromosome might code for lots of different types of proteins, so it has lots of different types of genes, and just a certain segment of the DNA that codes for something, that is made that makes a protein or a polypeptide. This we call a gene, right? So any DNA strand that actually codes for a polypeptide, which makes proteins, is that what we call a gene itself. So genes, what is the chemical nature of genes? Well, genes are made up of DNA, and these DNA are made up of these bases, these bases, and we're gonna cover the, the extra structure of DNA more in the next video. That's why you should know, you shouldn't realize that actually chromosomes are just lots of DNA, all of our DNA is in this form of chromosomes. That's why we we get them from 
doing cell division. That's why it's important because it, they make sure our daughter cells have that chromosome, all of our DNA within that chromosome. And why is DNA important? DNA is important because parts of it code for proteins. And those, those parts are called genes. And without these proteins, we will not be alive. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.